solidified their starting three on the weekend. It's all about who can will really step up to the plate, or at least in this case, the mound. The right. goals here during the midweek. And the first pitch from Brady Loud to Will Gale, the center fielder for JU, is in there for a strike. Absolutely, yeah. That's how you want to start out an in, or start out a game with a, a bullet right down the middle. Establish your establish the, the heater with authority. Always a confidence booster. Right. For Brady Lauk and any freshman trying to make a name for himself. This one fouled away by Gale out of play. Hives ahead one and two. Yes. Jacksonville lineup. As you see, Gale Prescott, the designated hitter, one of the starting pitchers for Jacksonville, and Justin Nadu will start things off. Ground ball over to short. Or Cal Fisher is getting another start there at the sixth position, and he throws out Will Gale over the first. One away here in the top of the first. Yeah, good piece of two-strike hitting right there by Gale. Just uh, pulls it into the hole, but Cal Fisher making a really good backhand. Look real easy. Throws the ball hard against across the diamond and uh, makes that makes that play look a lot easier than it really is. You got a freshman on the bump and a freshman at shortstop. And the young guns out there. It's a relatively young Florida State roster as Peyton Prescott swings and misses his first pitch out of Sebastian, Florida. Another freshman. This one inside one and one. Really an opportunity as we mentioned. Young guys getting a chance to step up to the plate a little bit here in the field at the plate during these midweek games. It's Florida State's first yep. week where they're playing two games in the middle of the week before they go into a week. Right, and that's that's uh, we talked about that a little earlier too, man. With, uh, with two games midweek, you, you really want to see your starting pitchers be effective and efficient. You know, they got to come out, they got to throw strikes, they got to try to induce outs quickly. So that they keep their pitch count low and they go a little deeper into the game. Well, off speed by Lau, and he gets the strikeout on Prescott. Two down here in the first. Yeah, that's that really, really good slider. That really good slider that Lau has. He keeps it down in the zone, even if Prescott makes contact with that. He's going to beat it into the ground for a ground out. That's a that's a great pitcher's pitch right there. But he set himself up nicely with that by working ahead in the count and getting ahead of. Uh, Prescott there. You see he's, does, he's done it with all three batters. First pitch strike to all three batters. I know Coach Posey is going to love that. Probably the first thing you'll let him know when he gets back in there. Justin Nadu grounder over to second base for Rowe. Right over there. Easy pitch and catch. One. It was Jacksonville at home back in February. Four and two thirds innings. Four and two thirds. Only two hits. Only two walks. Did really, really well. Down that's the, Ross. Uh, out to center field. Fly ball. That's where Will Gale is patrolled. Makes the easy catch for the fly out, one away. Yeah, keeping those, keeping these these Florida State bats at bay uh, in his four and two thirds against Florida State back in February was very impressive. And gave Jacksonville a chance to work their way back into that game after they trailed two nothing. Florida State was able to tack on some runs, but Jacksonville kept pace and eventually tied it for the ninth inning rally for the Knolls. Here's the ultra talented Cam Smith, the third baseman for the Knolls. Yeah, his, his bat's been hotter than a $5 pistol. Whew. He is not, has not quit. With, have, uh, he might have better than a six shooter in there. I'm not oh sure. Oh my goodness, he is. Uh, High artillery, not just him either. You take a look at this batting order. Smith, Tibbs, Jaime Ferrer. I mean, it's really tough all the way down as that ball is grounded and bouncing. It will trickle just foul. Yeah, one and one. Cam, Cam Smith's been off to a really hot start because of his ability to stay inside the ball this year. He's really turned the tables um, from last year. You know, he, he's, he's a big guy, power hitter, has the ability to hit a ball 450 on a on a dime. But man, when he uh, when he really matured a little bit over the summer and, and, and has really started using the entire field, and when you look at the hits racking up for him. He, he's, he's just as confident in hitting the ball at the middle for a single as he is hitting the ball off the wall for a double or a triple. It really took his time getting back to the home plate to continue this at bat. And unfortunately, it's a really short appearance now after the called third strike. Barkman painting the outside corner, and suddenly there's two away. 
Yeah, that's what Coach Hayes said Barkwin's really got to do is keep that ball down in the zone. He's a, another sinker slider guy. He's got the ability to run that ball in on righties with his fastball, but he's also got the ability, you saw right there, to hit that, hit that corner down and away. It's a great pitcher's pitch with two strikes. First pitch missing the strike zone for James Tibbs. Another guy with a red hot bat coming off a four for four performance against Louisville this past Saturday. Yeah, one thing about James Tibbs is he has just gotten better and better and better every single year. And you see that average going up. You see the power numbers going up. You see the RBIs going up. And that's because he's got such a good eye at the plate. Boy, that was tattooed down the line, but trailed and sliced a bit foul. I was watching him in batting practice really focused in on driving the ball to left field. And he, you see it right there. He did not miss that ball at all, but just missed a double. And really, so many of these guys in Florida State's lineup have that natural power, just have that natural drive off the bat. It's just all about putting barrel to bat most right. of the time and working those hands, like you say. It's a position that bat in the proper proper place for the ball. Absolutely. When I think, and I think James Tibbs does a good job of that. He makes the pitcher come to him. This one. Drilled to center field for the first base hit of the game. Tibbs will end up with a two out single, and he is five for his last five. Well, we're talking about hot. There's another hot bat. And the Florida State lineup's got quite a few of them. You see James Tibbs doing a good job right here, getting a fastball down and away. Does not try to do too much. That's where you can get yourself in trouble as a, as a hitter, is trying to pull that ball. He stays right through the middle. Shoots at the center field, base hit. Now the Florida State's got a shot here. Jaime Ferrer swings the first pitch over to short. That's where Hence is stationed, and he gets Ferrer to retire the side. So one hit for the Bulls at Mike Martin Field, Dick Houser Stadium. Brady Lauk returning to the mound for his second inning of work. Starts off with a strike to Clay Hodges, right fielder out of Jacksonville, Florida. Now I propose. <laughs> one and one. Didn't have to go far for his college career, did he? Yeah, he saw one right down the road, apparently. There you go. <laughs> Hodges, 278 at the plate. Fouls this one off into foul territory, drifting away oh. and not in the reach of Almost a great play by a young fan yeah, out there, though. They're reaching over the fence. He Pretty good play by that right young man. Right in front of Daniel Cantu, who was way out of reach for that foul ball. But <laughs> yeah, these these guys, these guys are shading uh, Hodges to pull the ball a little bit. And you see the first baseman playing way off the bag. You see Tibbs way off the line. That ball's just out of reach for both those guys. And foul back, one and two. But I'll tell you what, you love to see Brady out. Working ahead of his batters again. Just misses there with an off speed. Great pitcher's pitch. He's way ahead. You're gonna if you're gonna waste a pitch, throw that off speed and try to get him to chase. Good pitch right there by Brady Lout. Another foul by Hodges. Same side. Count remains two and two. Red shirt sophomore, Hodges. Yeah, doing a really good job in this at bat, staying alive. And he's Unfortunately, can't check in time as Lauk gets him to chase up the ladder, and Lauk has another strikeout. Lauk with the high heat right here. You see him climb the ladder on Hodges and Hodges. I'll tell you what, man, when those, those high fastballs look so hittable, but they sneak up on you so fast, and Hodges just can't hold up right there. Another really good pitch by Brady Lauk. And out in front again to start this at bat against. Via Edmonds. Yeah, that's one thing. Talking to Coach Posey a little bit this year, he's big on first pitch strikes and big on the first two of your, two out of three pitches being strikes. If you pitch like that, you're always ahead of the batter. That just makes it so much easier to pitch. Makes it better on your defense. Makes it way tougher on the batter. Swing and a miss. Might have gotten a piece of that. But still finds the mid of Holbrook there, and so loud. Really finding a groove. However, Bla Edmonds sends this one to left field. But left a little too high for Jaime Ferrer. He's able to track that one down two away. 
Solid contact, but yeah. just floated to the wrong place. Edmonds, I think he got jammed up a little bit right there, but shows you how strong he is. I thought that was going to be a bloop over the shortstop, and that ball stayed in the air for a while. That was a battle at bat by, by Edmonds there, but outstanding pitching by Brady Lauer. Here's Nick DeLisi making his 12th start of the season, the catcher from Olney, Maryland. This one gets away, probably the first pitch for Lout that he would like to have back. Yeah, it looked like a changeup right there, and and we talked again. We talked to Coach before the game a little bit, and he's been working on that changeup. It's definitely a third pitch. It's got a lot of ability. It's got a lot of bite, but he's he's Brady Lout just hadn't quite got command of that pitch yet to to really make it a part of his arsenal. Nice command of that fastball coming in, clocking at 90 miles per hour. And gets Delisi to foul again, and Link's really been. Link Jarrett, head coach for Florida State, has really been amazed at the turnaround for his pitching staff, which is really the big sticking point last year of where this team needed to improve in his first season. He just didn't have any quality starters. Now he has the luxury of finding guys. Now into the midweek as you see Lout dialed up and focused and with a strike. And already Link's out, <laughs> already Link Jarrett's out discussing that call. I'm not sure what he's doing here, but Coach Jarrett having a conversation with home plate umpire Ryan Clark. Maybe he's asking for why was there no appeal, perhaps? I'm not sure. Either way, Blake Barkwin <laughs> starting Marco Dens is off with a uh, first pitch off speed strike on the corner. Maybe, Good. He just, maybe he just heard us talking about it. He just <laughs> wanted to get more camera time. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Although Link's not the most outspoken guy if you ever get a chance to talk to him. He, he's pretty dialed up, buttoned up, business as usual. Oh, he, he's intense when it comes to baseball, that's for <laughs> certain. But he is, uh, yeah, he's, he's business as usual. See that big-time swing by Marco Dinges. This guy really, really swings the bat hard, and I love, I love to see it. I, that's the kind of, uh, he's the kind of batter, if you're, if you're a pitcher, you, you get a little nervous, hope he doesn't make perfect contact because he just has done a nice job of really bringing guys across the plate. He actually leads the team in sacrifice flies. As there's Link, you know, I think he's calmed himself down a little bit. He's <laughs> settling in here in that post <laughs> on the rail. Dinges over to second. Back to Nadu. And he retires Dinges for the first out in the second. Yeah, Blake Barkwin doing a really good job, doing exactly what Coach Hayes said he needed to do. He's got to work down in the zone. He's, he, you know, he, he's really gets himself into trouble and he keeps the ball elevated. But when he throws that sinker and that slider down in the zone, he really induces a lot of ground outs. And so far, that's been the, the game for him. Check down to third. And that is a called strike against Daniel Cantu. Didn't bring the bat around, but looks like it found the zone all the same. Actually talking to Link Jarrett after their series against Louisville, he mentioned about how good and talented this JU team has in terms of their really talented arms. This is going back to that first matchup on the road in Jacksonville. Really said the stuff, their stuff, velocity really stands out. Yeah, and, and, and for, for a mid-major school like JU to, to draw so much quality talent, that's that's just a, a tip of the cap to Coach Hayes and his recruiting ability. And, and to uh, first-year coach Justin Pope, um, he's, the, he's the new pitching coach there. He's done a great job with these arms as well. Jacksonville's in a real fight right now in the Atlantic Sun standings. And their overall record may not be something that's really impressive to look at as Cade Hentz fires one over a little skipper over to first base but Delgado with Delgado a good scoop. Nice job of scooping it up for two outs. I'd love to see a good good scoop at <laughs> first, first base. You're, you're being a first baseman in your own right. Love to see elite defensive plays over there hey, you, to you, get the job done at first base. You got it. You got to help your teammates out man. They, they, they got to you got to finish the play for them a lot of times. I, I love to see them helping each other out. And that's actually something Jacksonville really wants to focus in on and make sure it's tuned up right. Errors have been a little bit of an issue for them over the course of this season. That's right. 33 already this short season. But uh, 
you know that 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 kind of comes with the games. It'll 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 work itself out. You know, you don't you don't want to make errors because errors definitely lead to un, unforgiven runs, and and that's how you lose baseball games. But getting better a little bit at a time, one game at a time. Drew Perot gets a hold of this one, but it's right to center fielder Will Gale for the end of the second inning. So no harm, no foul. Has uh, has led JU to two regional appearances in his first eight seasons, which is very, very impressive. And uh, doing a good job of attracting young coaching talent as well as new new pitching coach Justin Pope and a new hitting coach Col Colby Bortles. And, and both doing very well so far. Brother of Blake Bortles, former yep. UCF quarterback. So a yep. very athletic group that knows some things about athletics you would like to think if you get to this level. They certainly know their self. Absolutely. And there's no shortage of good baseball talent in, in that Jacksonville area, I'll tell you what. Adriel Delgado swinging, getting a piece of it, but it's quickly retired by Brady Lauk. Tell you what, man, Brady Lauk's on another planet so far. He is uh, 30 pitches through his first seven batters and already 4Ks. Well, that, I mean, you just compare it to his last time out when he got the start against the aforementioned Stetson. He only threw 31 pitches. Here's his 31st tonight. But he only won an inning and a third. A couple yeah. walks. I think the walks were one probably. Hit got a strikeout, but nonetheless, you know, this is much more impressive so far. Right. So what he's done in between these last two weeks is really paying off right now. Is this a ground ball over to short? Cal Fisher once again charging that. Pull off base, but a heads up play by Cantu at first. To yeah, tag another, out hence. Another great play by the shortstop, Cal Fisher. Had to had to charge that ball, had to come in hard, make a throw on the run. Sometimes when you're throwing that ball on the run and that ball's gonna run up the line a little bit. But you see a great job by the veteran can too to catch the ball up the line, worry about catch it first, then tag the player. But it just uh, again made a tough play look real easy on both sides of the ball there. Fly ball by Westmoreland. Sky to shallow center, you know, relatively pedestrian center field. Leaving for the fans here in Tallahassee to take in some baseball. It's the best baseball weather. <laughs> not going to get sunburned. You don't have to fight the sun if you're out there in the outfield. Yeah, not not sweating too much, but not not cold either. You don't have to layer it on. 76 degrees. McGuire Holbrook sends this one down the line for a base hit, possibly extras. It'll go to the wall. Holbrook. Will head into second base standing up. And he is the first runner in scoring position in this game. Gets things going. The young catcher. Off to a good start here in the third. Yeah, great piece of hitting here by McGuire Holbrook. You see this a little looked like a, a changeup just left out over the plate. Holbrook a little out in front of it, but man, he does not slow his barrel down and hooks it down the line for a double. Good hustle double by the catcher right there. Good job. From a wire Holbrook. Now the first test of adversity here for Parkwin. As Cal Fisher, this upstart young freshman shortstop, fouls the first pitch off. Yeah, we talked a little earlier. His first first career at bat was a home run. Uh, I'm believing the first game of the season. Got the start. Ooh, that one uh, he running in stung, on the hands. Stung right in there on the arm. But he will gladly take first base and all of a sudden quickly after just a few pitches Barkman has allowed two runners to climb aboard. Yeah, glad to see uh, Cal Fisher's okay when he hits you in the, in the hand or the wrist. Those are always the worst places to get hit as a batter. And there's a lot more places that hurt, but those are dangerous because there's some small bones that get broken in those, those parts. Your, a lot of nerves. Your hands and wrists. A lot of nerves in there that can travel through there. We got some adversity here for uh, Blake Barkwin. First two runners of the or first two batters of the uh, inning reach base, and now you're back to the top of the lineup with where you got to face Diamas Ross, Cam Smith, James Tibbs, Jaime Ferrer, Marco Dinges with runners on base. Good lord! And now Diamas Ross, as you just saw there in the first attempt, looking to drop bunt and advance those runners into scoring position, making the threat even more dangerous. Let's this one go, and this gets away. And that'll get the runners to second and third. Nick DeLisi could not hang on. 
that pitch inside on Ross. And so Holbrook yep. and Fisher advance. That might have been a cross up right there between the catcher and the pitcher. It looks like that ball. Yeah, as Ross again trying to bunt. A little late show trying to get a hit maybe out of it. But um, anytime you have a runner first and second, you're going to probably try to bunt in this situation with your leadoff batter. Try to get those runners second and third. Now he gets them to second and third and gives them an opportunity to get a hit with some runners on scoring position. One's still possible, but at least he doesn't have the necessity to do it, but he pops this one out, shallow left field. Edmonds calls off Hence. Uh, work, quickly worked that ball back into the infield, one away. Yeah, that's that's probably the one thing you don't want to do as a hitter is uh, hit a shallow fly ball or a fly ball to the infield, runners in scoring position. A, a ground ball behind the runners gets, a, gets one run in, a a line driver hard fly ball deep to the outfield gets a run in that's that's just one of those one of the one things you can't do anything it shortened in the air is no boss right with runners on as Smith swings and misses at this first pitch on to drive that ball to the outfield no doubt yeah again they, they start Cam Smith off with an off-speed pitch and he tried to sit back on it just waited a little too long on that one This one fouled off. Now go out of Dick Houser Stadium, 0-2. It's another low off-speed pitch, good location by the pitcher Brady, or, sorry, Blake Barquin. Quickly ahead of Cam Smith here, who's pretty, pretty good with runners in scoring position this year. This fastball sails well out of the zone and nearly beans Smith on the helmet, one and two. Smith leading this Florida State lineup in at-bats, runs, and hits. Looking for his 50th of the season. And a 390 batting average with runners in scoring position. This one fouled back into the netting. Stays alive, one and two. Blake Barkman pumped that one up to 92-93, trying to get it up in the zone and by Cam Smith. Cam Smith with the quick hands, able to make contact and foul it off. Another one-two pitch from Barkwin. This one grounded, hits Barkwin, able to stop it. Grabbed by the catcher, he will get Smith at first. However, a run does cross the plate, so the Knowles get on the board first. Have to, not after Barkwin is the one who gets beamed by Cam Smith. That's just so dangerous, man. And you see, you see Cam Smith, who is, is has been <laughs> so good this year. He has not missed a lot of barrels, and that ball right there just squared up. That's a great two-strike approach by Cam Smith. And, and good on Blake Barkwin to get up and try to get that ball and get it out. Luckily, the catcher popped right back out and was able to get the out at first. He just, you, you just automatically earned your respect, man. He, he was just an incredible coach and, and an incredible human being. So I, definitely an honor to play for him. And a beautiful tribute before this season began after the passing of Mike Martin Sr. Yep. As James Tibbs gets his second crack of the night. Yeah, James Tibbs with a, uh, a single in the first inning, but up here with another runner in scoring position, leader in this team in RBIs, has got one 90 feet away. He's got 40 on the season. Check swing does not go around, 2-0. and Now for Barkwin, you know, after getting tagged by Smith off the bat, how does he respond in just trying to find the strike zone and resettle things? Well, you got to clear your head, man. I know I know his shin's probably hurting up there, but <laughs> you, you got to get right back at it, man. There's no, there's nobody warming up in the pen, and you, you got to be the guy to carry the weight right here. But go ahead and go ahead and come back out and throw some strikes and try to get try to get your team back in the dugout. And is quickly behind 3-0 and now. Tibbs not only the leader and runs batted in, but with home runs for Florida State and total bases. Top you slugging see. percentage as well. There's a strike. You see him taken all the way right there, 3 0. And it's not just the Tibbs can fire off, you know, with the bat. He's also a very disciplined hitter. Several walks. Yeah, last year led the team in walks. This year's right on pace to be doing the same. He's he's a He's got a very, very good eye at the plate. And we talked about his last at bat. He just, he has the ability to make the pitcher make mistakes because he does not chase. So the pitcher has to come inside the zone to him. And that's where he's, that's where he's the most dangerous as a hitter. Full count with two outs, check swing. And Tibbs gets rung up anyway. 
So Tibbs strikes out. Barquin limits the damage. However, Florida State. He has been just lights out. You see him do it again right there. Back to the top of the lineup. Second time through for the for the Jacksonville Dolphins. And uh, Brady Lauk, man, four, four strikeouts, three ground outs. First time through the lineup has been effective and efficient. That's what, exactly what we talked about before the game. He's, he's been lights out. Link Jarrett and Mike Posey might as well just be getting a bucket of popcorn right now in the dugout watching this. Of course, they're watching intently with everything, but oh, it's got to be enjoyable nonetheless. Absolutely. I'm sure that this, this is the type of start they wanted from their young pitcher. And, uh, you know, there, there's there, there's bound to be growing pains when you got a young guy on the mound, especially a true freshman. But um, they, they're very confident in this young man, and, and he's really doing a good job of trying to prove himself tonight. Well, we talked with Micah Posey before the game, the FSU's pitching coach, and he really described Brady as a silent assassin, especially when he's on his game, but really quiet, a little dry sense of humor. As a young man, though, still finding his way, but he has been proving himself up to task right now as a silent assassin, although he misses just barely here. Count goes full. Yeah, I'm not sure that Brady Loud missed as much as McGuire Holbrook did a, did a job of pulling that ball up too high. That was a little phenomenal too, pitch. A little too obvious, perhaps, and there's the first base runner for J.U. as Will, Will Gale will trot over to first with the bases on balls. Yeah, these are the type of things that kill a team right here. Is there, or not kill a team. We're killing outing. is leadoff walks, and that's what you want to stay away from. I'm sure that he's been coached over and over about this part of the game, but you want to see uh, you want to see Brady Lauk do a good job right here of coming back, throwing strikes, trying to get a ground ball right here. This is this is the type of you see you see him right there trying to overthrow a little bit. Now he's got a runner on. He, you know sometimes a young guy, especially a lefty, might try to rush the ball to the plate. Now that they got a runner on base, you don't necessarily have to do that. Although you do have Ju's stolen base leader on first base it's just not something you have to worry that about skied well deep over the wall but it is fairly foul so it avoids a two run home run as Prescott really got a hold of that pitch Prescott did not miss that one that ball was foul by several feet but that ball would have been out by about 30 feet Peyton Prescott a two way player one of JU's starting pitchers in fact as Locke finds the zone, gets ahead now one and two. I'm sure he's pumped up to get the, the start at the plate. You see him. He probably doesn't get too many opportunities to hit. And you saw right there, he's trying his hardest to take advantage of it. Let's this ball go by low and in the dirt. Gets away from Holbrook, and Gale will advance to second base. Yeah, you're not wrong. Prescott, this is only his third game starting in terms of in the lineup fifth game overall this year but he is a starting pitcher for Jacksonville in general you see that batting average at 143 but does have four runs batted in and his limited appearances at the plate you can see he's still got some talent to drive that ball yeah he's definitely all over Brady Lauk's uh, off speed pitch right there he hit the fastball about 400 feet down the line and almost took out a bat girl with that swing Luckily, they're well prepared here in Dick Houser Stadium with the helmets. Absolutely. They have absolutely. to pay attention always, nonetheless. The always. nets are up, and the signs and the reminders are out there to always keep your eyes on the action. Always, and especially with the way these guys hit the ball. 2 2 pitch, swing and a miss by Prescott, and Hout gets, or Lauk gets back on track. Another strikeout for the young lefty. Yeah, Lauk really pulled that one inside the hands of uh, Prescott. You see him trying to trying to get into that ball again. Man, he, he squared two two really hard balls up that at bat, but could not get the barrel to that one. Already five strikeouts, just three and one third inning right now. And another one gets away from Holbrook, and Gale will easily make his way over to third. So a couple of pass balls, including the walk, as Jacksonville, 90 feet away. Yeah, this is what you got. I mean, you know, when you when you come out as the Seminoles, you score a run. You need your pitcher to come out there and, and put up a, a zero on the scoreboard. But Jacksonville's not. Um, they're not going to go to sleep on you. They're not going to give up. And they're especially not going to give up easily. 
Yeah. They know that Lauk is a freshman. They know that they can get in his head a little bit. Like you said, silent assassin. I think, uh, you know, Brady Lauk being from Plainfield, Illinois, coming down to Florida, a little far, far away from home. Might play into that a little bit, but fans I'm not, sure he's <laughs> comfortable and right at home on the mound. Yeah. Fans, fans not liking that call again from Ryan Clark. No. Two and one now. Yeah. Early in the game, has been a little inconsistency behind the plate. Well, no denying on what this is. Foul back in the netting, two and two. Now you mentioned Lauk from Plainfield, Illinois, ranked the number one left-handed pitcher by perfect game in the state. In fact, it was an all-state selection in 2021. In all region as well that same year and in 2022. A lot of talent. Swing and a miss. Make it six Ks for Brady Lauk. Two down. This is a great pitch, lefty on lefty. And this is JU's top hitter. Four, four, came into the game, Nadal uh, 409 has been just as consistent as any hitter could be. And Brady Lauk. Coming through with another big strikeout with a runner on third. This one shot right up the middle by Clay Hodges, and Jacksonville will tie this ball game up as Gale trots home. So a big two-out base hit for the Dolphins. Yep. Getting this game up, tied to 1-1. One -one. Really good piece of hitting right there. Jumped all over the first pitch. Hodges not trying to do too much, knows exactly the situation. You got two outs, you got a runner on third. All you have to do is put that ball up the middle, man. He did a great job and, and really took advantage. I think that's the first batter that really kind of keyed in or honed in on, on the fact that Lauk's been first pitch strike almost every time. Maybe 6'2", 154, but he does pack a punch with a fastball and a slider, so yeah, he, he can, will definitely he deliver bring, the goods. He can bring it. He's got that three-quarter arm slot that really sweeps across the plate to lefty, so playing a little bit of a matchup. You look at it right there, first pitch slider. Just missing on the outside corner. It is not an elongated delivery either. Just really snappy, quick to the point of yep. trying to get that ball out of there. That's what makes it so effective. That spin rate is just exceptional. First two off the mark to La Edmonds. Or Blake Edmonds, I should say. Apologies. Strong taking a peek over there to first base. Make sure Hodges isn't going anywhere. It's a little bit of a shaky start here for Armstrong, 3 0. Right, this is certainly not his MO. He doesn't work behind batters too often, so I'd like to see. See what kind of maturity level he's going to do. See if he can come back right here and go nothing but strikes. And on four pitches, walks Edmonds. So all of a sudden, JU getting a little bit of momentum going, but mainly due to the fact that Florida State's walked a couple batters here, a couple pass balls. Right. Have gotten them right back into the ball game, and now have a chance to take the lead. Yeah, we're going to have a quick visit by. Yeah, Pitching comes, coach Mike Posey. Yeah, Mike Posey coming right on out. Gonna check in on his young left-hander here. Yeah, you see him bringing the scouting report out there. He's trying to get him to settle down. School uh, back in the day, but had a heck of a heck of a coaching career. Just about every stop he's made, but uh, last one at Dallas Baptist, and you could tell he he, he left a mark on them because they're they're a top 25 team as well now. Well, whatever he just said, uh, Armstrong helped as well. He finds the strike zone. 0 and 1 to start things off with Delisi. If you had any guesses, what do you think he was telling him in there to motivate him? <laughs> if, well, if, if it's not the scouting report, what do you think motivates him? I, I think him? I think he knows that that Army's a good pitcher, and, and I think he I think he's let. Hey man, you're you're fine. It's just you know you got to come out here and throw strikes. You got this good hitter coming up. Keep the ball down. Keep it away. And so far so good. He's, Look at that. He's doing exactly that. It's like you're inside his mind. Right. Down just, and away. Just <laughs> don't let this guy beat you with something up in the zone, man. Get get the ball down the way. If he swings at it, we we'll, we'll step on a base. Get back in the dugout and get you another inning next inning. Brandon Riker, Trevor DeGroat here, bringing you the action. One two pitch. Yeah, runners going. And in there at third base now, Hodges advances. No throw by Holbrook. 
I didn't look to see if Andrew Armstrong was taking a peek over there, but man, what a jump. He got a heck of a jump right there. Had that base stolen all the way. Not even a throw from Holbrook. That's the third stolen base for Hodges on the season. 2-2, grounder over to third. Cam Smith waiting for it. Gets it on a couple hops and fires it over to Cantu to retire Jacksonville in the top. You know, you don't want to go too deep into the bullpen too early. You really want to make sure that uh, you're doing as much as you can to go eat up as many innings as possible. Bounces this first pitch to start off the fourth to Jaime Ferrer. Yeah, you got a couple free swingers in Jaime Ferrer and Marco Dinges. They, they'll swing at just about anything, but I'll tell you what, they find the barrel more times than they don't. You see it right there, 333, nine homers, 25 RBIs for Jaime Ferrer. I think nine homers this early in the season has got to be a, a career high so far. He has uh, been pretty lights out for this team. Well, he's been firing the ball off his bat since he got here. That's true. Just all a matter of putting it together a few more times. And Ferrer is just up there with some of the best in the ACC. Yeah, he hits the ball pretty hard most of the time. It's jammed inside one and two. And Ferrer is on a 32 game on base streak. Amazingly though, that's not tops right now on the team actively. That belongs to Cam Smith at 36. So again, the middle of this lineup finding their way on base. Jaime gets low on this pitch over to left field. However, Lake Edmonds able to charge and run that one down to deny Jaime Ferrer from extending that on base streak at the moment. Yeah, shows you how strong Jaime Ferrer is. That pitch down and away. He gets out in front of it, able to put the barrel on it and drive it all the way almost out to the warning track. But a great jump by the left fielder, Blake Edmonds, to, to make a good play on that. Somehow dug that one off the ground and drove it so far over to deep left field. That's called power. And I said it before, man. You see that free <laughs> swing, Den Marco Dinges. Dinges, man. He he swings the ball like he. Sw I'm sorry, he swings the bat like a bull being let out of a chute. Man, he does not hold back. Here's one that goes opposite field in the gap. It's falling, however, and it, that looks to be caught, and it is called out by the right fielder, Clay Hodges. What an amazing effort by the right fielder. Well, that's, that's the thing. When you got a guy that swings the bat that hard, you have to play him deep. You have to expect that ball to be hit deep. And that one just jams, jams Marco Denges up. So it's falling, going short. Hodges hauling butt all the way in and just an outstanding job. And a fist bump and a fist pump from Blake Barkwin. Oh, loving yeah. that effort. Yeah. Again, you, we talked about the efficiency of the Blake Parkwin, man. He's only at 50 pitches, 34 strikes so far. And his defense doing a great job of helping him out. Now Daniel Cantu gets under this pitch. Skied high to left center field. And Will Gale once again stationed perfectly under the ball to catch it. Make up for that, that, that tough weekend up there in Clemson. As Andrew Armstrong right back out there in relief of Brady Lock today. Start things off with Delgado. First there's, pitch strike. There's that first pitch strike that coaches always want to see. Fun attempts. Fouled away. 0-2. And, and again, we talked, we touched on it briefly, just how much the pitching in particular was such a focal point for Link Jarrett last year to get right, to figure out what he had on the roster. And this pitch gets away from Armstrong, and that's one of the worst things you can do, letting a guy go beating him after getting ahead 0-2. Yeah, that's a tough one right there. That one, that one just gets out of the hands of you can see it as soon as as soon as he let it go. Just he the knew grimace it was on his face. Just slipped out of his hands. Just seething through his teeth. Yeah, he's upset about that one and understandably so. He was way ahead. But yeah, what you're saying, Coach Coach Jarrett and, and, and Micah Posey and, and Ty McGahey and Coach Vanderglass, they're doing a heck of a job of just in my opinion, developing and creating a, a culture with this team. And you, you have to be able to compete at this level. So when you get on that mound, you know, you, you want to have a guy that, that is capable, who's confident, and, and believes in himself, and knows how the game is played. And, and that's what they've done a good job of, is just creating a culture and, and developing bulldogs, you know, guys who can get up there and compete. 
Well, they've certainly had those in the not too distant past. Several years ago, you know, you think of the likes of Parker Messick, who was coming through here, was an absolute bulldog. They called him a bulldog as a oh. left-hander. A lot of solid guys that went on to become drafted really Absolutely. early in the MLB drafts. I used to bring my, my son to every game Parker Messick pitch that I could bring him to because I wanted him to see that, that how he presented himself on the field and off the field. He just an outstanding. Kate Head swings. This throw by Hobart gets away from Fisher. Which allows Delgado to not just get to second, but sprint over to third as well. So a couple of miscues by Holbrook have advanced some JU runners and getting them into this game and yeah, provided the threats that JU has right now. Yeah, McGuire Holbrook's been just as solid as he could be on the offense, but you see you see that gap in the in the defense right there. It's just had a couple of tough goes. Chopper right over to Armstrong. Hence will sprint it out, but ball will stay in the infield and Delgado will stay at third. So one away for the Knowles here in the top of the fifth. Yes, yeah, the one of the we talked about Diamond's Ross earlier when you got a guy on third base and second, third, nobody out. You, you cannot pop that ball up shallow or in the infield. And that's the same same thing right here by Hintz. You, you don't want to ground that ball back to the pitcher. Just about anywhere else on the infield, you can save that. You can probably get that run in. But Florida State now with the infield in. Jackson Westmoreland swings and misses at that first pitch, 0 and 1. And going back to Holbrook, you know, this is an interesting story to keep an eye on throughout the course of the rest of this year. The way he and Jackson West are kind of competing for time behind the plate. They've been pretty even in their starts. As this one's fouled by Westmoreland, now 0 and 2 for Armstrong. Right. They're getting pretty much equal starts. It's Holbrook now with his 14th start of the season. Jackson West has 13, although he's been substituted in a few more times. But right. the deciding factor, I think, because they're hitting, they're both hitting so well. Maybe the difference of who maybe gets the majority of the starts on the way is what they do behind the plate. Right. I do think both of them are producing so well on offense that it's it's been very easy to interchange them and, and play the matchups. You know, uh, Jackson West being a left-handed hitter, maybe able you know, to start him against right-handed pitching and. McGuire Holbrook, let's give him the opportunity to hit off lefties when we see lefties. Swing and a miss. Wes Morland cannot handle the one they call Army. That was a great pitch by Andrew Armstrong. Down in the zone, working ahead. Great slider down in the zone. You're not going to do much with that pitch, but watching, watching Armstrong's ability to pitch with a guy on third and just, th this is what we were talking about. You got to be a bulldog. You have to compete. You can't, you can't be upset about a guy on third with nobody out you got to go get the three outs all right and this is this is what a quality pitcher does pressure does two things make diamonds or crush stone well and armstrong right now is proving that he can be a diamond on the diamond Let's see mcguire holbrook right there doing a good job of blocking that ball down in the zone but you're absolutely right. You, you know that he's a he's a diamond man. He, he's tough as nails. We used to back in my day. We, we, we you know you're one of three things. You were a stony, a uh, a milk dud, or a marshmallow. <laughs> oh, you got to elaborate now about all so, three I mean, of those. Stony's just hard rock. You know, hard as nails. You're, you're you're tough. You're tough on the outside. Tough on the inside. And then a milk dud. You're you're a little tough on the outside, but you're soft in the middle. And then a marshmallow is just soft all around, man. <laughs> you see Andrew Armstrong coming back like they're going quickly. Two of, two of those sound delicious, but I don't think you want to be that, though. You that, don't want to be described thought. as those, that's exactly. for sure. You don't that's want to get sure. consumed. You don't Absolutely. want to be eaten alive. <laughs> Three and one pitch from Armstrong. This one chopped by Gale and foul. And the count now goes to three and two. Yeah, Armstrong fell behind three and zero oh to Gale early, but quickly right back in this thing. This is this is what you want. This is the test you want to see. You want to see Armstrong see what he's made of right here in this situation. Here come the K-time chance, and they get it. Armstrong handles the pressure, gets it. Drew Ferro will lead things off for the Seminoles. Takes the first pitch well outside from Blake Barkwin. And Blake Barkwin might have the secret stuff here, Brandon, in terms of figuring out FSU's offense. See the first 26 games. Florida State averaging nearly 10 runs a game, but tonight right now just one. 
That was 9.8 of the top 10 in D1, but Barkwin in his two appearances against Florida State has been really solid. Yeah, tip of the cap to Blake Barkwin. He's working all the way into the fifth inning now for the Jacksonville Dolphins, and, and this is exactly what Coach Chris Hayes wanted from his pitcher. He's like, you know, we, we want to see what this guy's made of. We really need him to eat up some innings midweek, and, and you don't, you know, especially with a tough conference schedule that they have coming up, they do not want him or they do not want to go deep into that bullpen in a, in a midweek game if they don't have to. Uh, with the game being tight right now, they may they may decide differently as the game goes on. But uh, tip of the cap to Blake Bar Bar uh, Barkland so far. He's been outstanding. Well, he gives up his first walk to FSU hitting this season. And he, give, he lets Drew Perot head on over to first base. Not the start he would like to have seen here. No, and this is exactly how the, the last inning, uh, sorry, the, the uh, fourth inning started for, for, for JU. For JU, the leadoff walk, and now you got McGuire Hallberg up, who's hit a double already today. That was a walk and a couple of pass balls that got JU in position. Drew Gale, who drew that opening walk in the fourth and advanced on two pass balls, and it was eventually a base hit. Drew by Farreau. Clay Hodges that got him across the plate. Absolutely. Drew Farreau pretty quick in his own right. And speaking of which, here goes Farreau. Actually, no, correction. Actually, no, it is Farreau. I got tangled up with Jersey numbers here. It is Farreau firing off from first base, and he has his stolen base here and gets into scoring position. That's something Florida State's been really, really good at this year that they've really improved on from last year is their ability to steal bases and their ability to Get guys into scoring position. Six quicker. stolen base for Faro. Sliding dive by Nadu and does get McGuire Holbrook at first base. Faro advances to third, but a great diving stop by Jesus, the elite yeah, second man. baseman. Just an outstanding play right there on the other side of the bag. Gets the shortstop side of the bag, gets up, throws the ball. You know, just got to get it in the vicinity of the first baseman. And another great scoop over there by Delgado. But, man, what a what a play. McGuire Holbrook gets jammed a little bit, puts the ball right exactly where you need to get it, but does an exceptional job of getting the runner from second to third. In that situation, you have to hit behind the runner, and McGuire Holbrook does a good job staying inside of it. And... You know, bad luck. Nadal makes a great play, and you're out at first, but and, you do your job. And typically, any ball that can get through the middle of that infield is a good sign of things, potentially, even if he doesn't get on base. Cal Fisher fouls this one out, 0-2 quickly behind. And you see Cal Fisher, who is starting to get more playing time and starts at shortstop, was the number two ranked player in Wisconsin, originally tried to get recruited. Or Link Jarrett tried to recruit him while he was at Notre Dame. And in his first career start, not too shabby, two for four, a two-run home run. Right. Unfortunately here, not able to not stay able in this at-bat net. Yeah, not able a, to get too a, much done there. He strikes out swinging. That's, that's another phenomenal job. Blake Barkwin doing a good job, working ahead quickly. Uh, Cal Fisher probably missing the best pitch of that bat, fouling it back, and then Blake Barkwin coming with a very good, soft slider away, getting the young Cal Fisher chase. Now the top of the order again, Diamez Ross pops this one up shallow left field, but Edmonds is stationed right there in shallow left, and Florida State unable to get the lead back. Armstrong is back on the mound for Florida State. Andrew Armstrong. He faces Prescott and fires off a strike to start things off here in the top of the sixth. Prescott 0 for 2, the designated hitter, two-way player. Doesn't have a whole lot of at-bats under his belt this season, but, man, he, he looked like he was trying to take full advantage of the last at-bat. He, uh, he squared two balls up, pulling them foul, but one of them went about 400 feet, and one of them came off the bat about 105 miles an hour. They only entered the game with six at-bats. Jacksonville, we, must, we actually should mention, they are a little bit shorthanded tonight, a little bit of a stomach bug, a little sickness happening with the team. A couple guys out. Who'd be normally in the lineup? Going Although Prescott, the yeah, Prescott gets a really good hold of this, rips that one. But Ferrer, perfect positioning there in left field, retires Prescott. 
Yeah, again, Prescott really trying to take advantage of his opportunities. Man, what a what a swing. Barrels up. He's barreled up some good pitching so far today, and, and I, I know he doesn't have much to show for it, but, man, he's, he's had a couple loud outs and a couple of really, really good at-bats. The thing about that is, though, you know, you do sometimes, it's a game sometimes of inches and unfortunate circumstances, just positioning of where it is, but you continue to rake like that. Right. Hit the ball off the bat like that. That'll get you opportunities. Yeah, good things will good things will come. You know, if, if you're making outs like that, you got plenty of uh, plenty of opportunities throughout the season, right? So, Nato grounds to Cantu and we'll toss it over to Armstrong and quickly two away here in the sixth. It's a good backhand, a good job, good play by by Armstrong. I think Cantu led him a little too far there, but Armstrong speeding up and making that play. Again, look pretty easy. Coming from the expert first baseman over there to tell what Cantu's oh. doing wrong. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it made a phenomenal play, but you see, you see, <laughs> you can even see Cantu. Cantu sped him up a little bit. So just show me how fast you are, Army. You might have to have a conversation with him after this game. <laughs> Although it looks like they laughed it off, so I think they understand. 0 and 1, first pitch to Clay Hodges and Armstrong finding a rhythm. Yeah, this is where you, this is where you, you, you get that. That maturity, man, come back out, throw, you know, got to shut down that inning by by Ju pitching. You got to come back out and do the same thing. You got to you got to establish the strike zone, throw strikes, try to be efficient, get in, get out, get your team back in the dugout, try to try to manufacture a run. Armstrong, three starts on the year. He has been Florida State's main mid start midweek starter. So with him and Lauk, this one. Check swing fouled by Hodges. So with him and Lau combining today, Lau's for tomorrow when Florida State will face Bethune Cookman. Curious to see who will start that game. So maybe still determining, I think, by Link Jarrett. But nonetheless, right. guys getting opportunities added on here. So this is not unusual territory for Armstrong. Yeah, and you see midweek games are usually on a Tuesday or Wednesday because you really want to you want to get a couple days rest to these guys because they will come in and have the opportunity to pitch uh, in relief um, down the road and during the weekend. So still no decision by Link Jared who will start tomorrow's game. It's all about right now. Right. A lot of times, a lot of times they uh, they use these as bullpen days. You know, you, you, these guys throw 40, 50 pitch bullpens and. This one drilled by Hodges, trailing his tips, and he collects. Excellent sliding catch to his left. Tibbs with a highlight reel. Cam Smith leading things off for the Seminoles in the bottom of the sixth. Once again facing Blake Barkwin. Start things off with an opposite field. Ground ball, base hit through the right side. And so Cam Smith will keep that on base streak going now to 37 straight games reaching base for number 24. Cam Smith again, man, he's been so mature this year and stay, staying inside the ball, using the whole field. You see it right there. He's, 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 he's 0 for 2. He knows he's got to get a hit, get this team back going, and does a great job of barreling that ball up the other way. Tell you what, highlight of the night is Blake Barkwin, man. JU's pitcher going into the sixth inning. Uh, just the just – the, Second time this year, 63 total pitches, 42 strikes, has just been so efficient, so effective, and uh, it's, I mean, this is this is doing a great job. Coach uh, Coach Hayes said before the game, man, when he pitches at 80 to 85 percent, you watch him; he's just got that easy delivery tonight. But when he pitches 80, 85 percent, he is effective. When he tries to overthrow, is when he makes mistakes and gets himself into trouble. I don't even think that was a bad pitch he made to Cam Smith. I just think Cam Smith put a good swing on it. He just got out in front of that and sent it the opposite way. Good piece of hitting sometimes can beat some good pitching. Absolutely. And this is the heart of FSU's lineup. Parkwin. There goes Smith off and running, and he will get in there sliding. Tag, or I'm sorry, the throw not nearly in time, and Smith is in scoring position for Florida State. I'd say it'd be another. It's another very underrated and under talked about part of Cam Smith's game, man. This dude is fast. He is a big dude who is fast. Only his third stolen base of the year, but he is perfect in that department. Three for three. Yep, and he is uh, puts another one. That's uh, uh, the first time this team met. Uh, Florida State had four stolen bases against JU. James, James Tibbs hits this ball to left field. Sky to deep left field, and it's out of here into the JU bullpen.
Just another phenomenal piece of hitting right there by James Tibbs. Staying with his game, staying with himself, and driving this ball the, to opposite field just down the line. Shows you what kind of power this man has. He has been hot all year, does a great job again, staying behind this ball, and he knew it when he got up. That ball was gone. Great job. 12th home run of the season for Mr. Tibbs. In his 42nd RBI. He is just lighting up Dick Hauser Stadium. And this one gets a piece of Jaime Ferrer. Ball found its way into the infield, and he is shaken up badly. Yeah, that ball, for, for hitting a guy in the shin, that ball made it a long way. Well, he, like needs a, to, he needs to use his bat as a walking stick there momentarily. Oh, there's no bigger pain. He is, he is, he's got some protection down there on the left leg. I'm not 100% uh, sure that the ball hit the protection the way he's walking, but I'll tell you what, man, I've, I've, I've hit a few foul balls off my shin, and that's probably the worst feeling a batter can have. Look, I never, got, I never got past, you know, it, age 12 in Little League, and I, I, I was always scared as a hitter. Just it, seeing that ball anywhere close to me, I always wanted to get out of that batter's box. There's, there is just no meat right there in front of that shin. It, it hurts, man. That shoots, shoots pain right up the leg. And he's ready to rock and roll here. Owen one and sends that over to short. Once again, Kate Hentz there to fire it over to first for the first out in the bottom of the sixth. Again, going back to Tibbs, I mean. Just the opposite field power can send it to any part of the ballpark and didn't look like that ball was going to drive so much, but it was a rainbow shot and got just enough of it to change that bat level to get barrel to bat and carried with the wind kind of going a little bit from right to left field. Right. Might have had a little help, but nonetheless, to drive that ball as far as he did was impressive. I, I'll tell you what, man, when, when, when a guy is able to hit the ball that far to opposite field. Speaking of opposite field, Dingus. Just a little bit too much carry for Gale to come away. Ball. Two down. I just really like watching Marco Dinge swing. <laughs> he hits the ball so hard. But uh, yeah, no, for a guy to have that much carry on that ball, it tells you that they're really staying through the ball, not just hitting it and pulling off. They're hitting it and driving through the ball. And that carry, I mean, it shows you how strong James Tibbs has gotten. I mean, every single year that guy has gotten better and better and better. It's just been an impressive career for, for him at Florida State and he's he is certainly showing it this year. Junior out of Marietta, Georgia. But nothing short of spectacular. Now Daniel Cantu staying patient there at the plate. One and one now. Daniel Cantu is another one of those Florida State hitters who's been on a tear in the second part of he, he, he starts first 10 games. He was he was having a rough go at it. And I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it that necessarily because every ball he hit it seemed like it came off the bat hard man. He just he just couldn't get anything to fall early on and that hadn't been the case in these last 10 or 15 games. He has been on fire swing and a miss a violent swing by Cantu two and two Barkwin just needs to get one more out and he'll have a season best in terms of innings pitched. Cantu denies him of that satisfaction off that foul. Yeah, you talk, we, we talked about efficiency all night from, from pitching. And Barkwin, it, it, you know, five and two thirds, only 75 pitches and, and 49 strikes. Man, he's just been, he's been so effective so far. You know. Swing and a miss, and he gets that season best to six. To get matter when you don't, you don't get to see it for a long time. See him, he keeps that ball in the glove for a little extra half second there, and that, that just makes it so tough. Takes on Blake Edmonds to start his outing off here in the seventh inning and clinging to a two-run lead. Oh. And does not get good rotation or just good direction on that pitch. Beams Edmonds in the back, and he'll trot on over to first. Yeah, that ball just gets away from Rowan right there, but again, you see him... Uh, not afraid to throw inside to the lefties, and that's what you got to do. You got to be effective. But I'll tell you what, that's not something Coach Jared or 
Coach Posey want to see is a leadoff runner on base. You can you, you got to eliminate that part of your game. Probably a good heads up move by McGuire Holbrook just checking in on Rowan seeing if he's OK. Right. Get himself reset back on track. Get ready for Nick Delsey. Yeah, no. Nick Delisi, he's 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 a daggone good hitter, man. Three came into the game 361. Strikeout and a ground out tonight, though. But you see him. This is probably this is a, he's getting an opportunity here with a, another leadoff guy on first base. Yeah, another visit. You don't want to. You don't want to sleep on them, but you also your left handed pitcher. You can see what's going on over there. Just throw strikes, get this ground ball, get a double play, and let's move on. Delisi watches that pitch go by 2 0. Delisi, a transfer from East Carolina, didn't get a whole lot of playing time. In fact, only played four games in a reserve role for the Pirates. This pitch gets past Holbrook. An easy move over for Edmonds over to second. So another pass ball for FSU pitching and what has been really the only real downfall I'd say so far Brandon for FSU pitching tonight just a few mistakes Holbrook probably you can let that one get by him in terms of letting that one pass by link at Luke Jerry just saw was about to head out out of the dugout but thought better of it. Yeah, that one right there just I, I not I like what you're seeing I would imagine right now. Yeah, but he hadn't thrown a strike yet. It's five pitches, no strikes. There's six. And you, you lead off with a, a hit batter and a walk. That's that's certainly not what you want to see. But you know, these are those those freshman hurdles you got you gotta get over. And here comes Link Jarrett. Brennan Oxford's been great against the Pikes as well, don't get me wrong, but I think that that was part of the matchup there. Andrea Delgado lays down the bunt, down the third base line. Cam Smith all over it. But Delgado does his job advancing both Dolphin runners over to scoring position. So Edmonds to third, Delisi to second. One away. Yeah, perfect sack bunt right there by Delgado. Again, you, you, you know, Seminoles go and get a quick two runs last inning. And, and J.U. doing a great job of trying to get these two back. Now you got runners on second and third with only one out. Keep in mind, this Jacksonville team last year hit 56 home runs. 44 of those home runs are no longer on this team. So they had a lot of drop off between right. these past two years with their home run production. Well, not to mention two or three of their starting lineup is out sick at the moment. So it's a great showing from from a, a J.U. team who's not working with their full arsenal. Tanner Zellum is going to pinch run for Delisi. Zellum had a good performance and gets Florida State in the team in these two teams first matchup. So extra speed on the base paths for Chris Hayes. Now Kate Hentz will look to try and bring both runners home. He's a first pitch ball out of the zone. Kate Hens with 15 RBIs on the season and another shot right here. Some some runners to get in. He's got a good opportunity with the Florida State infield. Well, the middle infield playing back and the corners playing in. Excellent fastball inside corner for one and one. And I mentioned the home runs production because JU's really trying to depend more on gap hitting and base running now. They're not afraid to play small ball. Link Jarrett even made mention of that. They are really good. Chris Hayes does a great job of managing the situations and situational baseball and this is one of those times right now for J.U. if they can execute it right they could come away with a couple more runs. Absolutely and just I mean you're, you're in a situation here where you know even a ground ball up the middle gets you get you at least one of your runs back but like you said Chris Hayes man just just playing the chess match perfectly right now. This one sky to deep center field. Diomez Ross is going to get underneath it, makes the catch. Tag at third is Edmonds, and he will score. Florida State keeps Zellum over at second base. But the Dolphins inch closer, making it three to two. You see back to back sacrifices, back sack fly, or I'm sorry, sack bunt by Delgado, and then Hintz with a sack fly. And again, that's that opportunity. You give a guy an opportunity, you put a guy on uh, second, third with one out, 
and all the batter has to do is hit a ball hard somewhere, you know? Great job. Diamas Ross gets behind that, gives up the run to home, but throws to third. Got it. New hitter, Aid Masters. Right, Aiden Masters in. Pitch hitting for Westmoreland, Jackson Westmoreland. So more shifting from Chris Hayes. Trying to find the right matchups. Whatever it takes to get more runs across the plate. Pickoff attempt over a second, and Zellum gets in there. That's one right there. You're just trying to steal the out. Unfortunately, gave up the, the one run, but you're still in this. You're still ahead if you're Florida State. You just need to get this batter out and get yourself back in the dugout to regroup. And that's the first earned run given up by FSU relievers since the Clemson series yep. over a week ago. So what was an excellent run comes to an end bound to happen. You can't right. expect you know no earned runs at any point for your relievers. But still if they can get out of this jam. You still have your lead going into the bottom of the seventh. Absolutely. I'm gonna tell you what there's there's two two sayings in baseball and, and one of them is <laughs> when you lead off lead off walks almost always turn into to runs and then two out hits win ball games. Right. So you're in a scenario right here where a two out hit ties a ball game. So Put you in a great situation if you're JU, if you can get Aiden Masters, get a hit right here. Masters, the junior out of Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. Pitch just off the plate. Moves the count to three and one. You hear the Seminole faithful, don't like that call. No. Well, wasn't the worst call from what no, 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 <laughs> the this, fans have been just voicing tonight. Yeah, two the or three that don't like any call that's not Florida <laughs> State favorite, I'll tell you that. It's I think they would be objectively subjective. Or subjectively objective, however <laughs> right. you want to phrase that. And if they were describing what they thought. Absolutely. Well, they got a full count now after that foul by Masters. And a chance for Oxford to keep the lead for the Knowles. Zellum still at second. Oxford checks. Now the pitch. Strike three right over the middle. Huge pitch right there by Brandon Oxford. You see the emotion coming off the mound. He knew the situation. He had to get that back off the mound. He's off. Followed by McGuire, Holbrook, and Cal Fisher. Two-time transfer Logan Jones from Sanford and also Pasco Hernando State on the west coast of Florida. First pitch well outside for Farrell. Played some games against Pasco Hernando back when I was in junior college. I even did a summer class there one time. Back when it was called Pasco Hernando Community College. Yeah. Way back in the day. I feel old now. <laughs> 2 and 0 here to Farrell. I actually I actually played uh, some summer ball and a at Mercer with a a, a pitcher slash first baseman that came over from Pasco and they produce some good talent. I'll tell you that. Reno pitch. Jones finds the zone. Three and one. Yeah, Drew Fro taken all the way right there. Three out. So if you're, if you're not going to jump all over the first pitch, you got to let this guy make him pitch some. Bro fires it right back to Jones off his glove, but keeps his cool and fires over to Delgado for the first out. Yeah, Drew with a, a good 3-1 swing right there. Barrels that ball up, just gets on top of it and hits it hard enough to bounce out of the pitcher's glove, but plenty of time for Aiden Masters right there. I'm sorry, Logan Jones. Plenty of time for Logan Jones to get that play at first base. Now here's McGuire Holbrook, who's one for two tonight. Rolling in the dirt outside. Holbrook. Supplied a double in the third inning, a leadoff double. That eventually led to the first run for the Knowles and the game. Another pitch out of the zone, 2 0. Right, and actually, uh, his last at bat got jammed up a little bit, but had a, had a second hit stolen from him from Justin Nadeau, the second baseman. 
Yeah, that was made a, a phenomenal diving play. play. Diving play across the bag at second base over his shortstop territory and able to gun down Holbrook. Big 2-0 swing right there from McGuire Holbrook. Nothing doing here, three and one. Right. And these are scenarios as a pitcher you don't necessarily want to be in. McGuire Holbrook, when he when he barrels the ball up, man, he really gets a hold of it. You, you give him an opportunity, 2-0, where he just misses the ball. Now he's got another good hitter's count, 3-1. Oh, and this one really goes high on Holbrook, and Duxon goes back into a shell to protect his neck. Looks like he's okay, and he will go over to first base. That is a scary pitch. Yeah, that one just sails out of the hand of Logan Jones and gets McGuire Holbrook in the upper shoulder, it looks like. But yeah, high back left side. As a catcher, you see, man, I'll tell you what, catchers are used to getting hit and being tough, but you don't want to be hit by a pitch on the uh they do not up expect there. that. You and don't want Jordan. to be hit up by the face, <laughs> man. Any, anywhere up by the head's dangerous. Definitely not. Number 12, Jordan Williams will sub in for Holbrook. As we get a conference to the mound for JU. And Looks like pitching coach Justin Pope. Guy was a pretty darn good pitcher himself in his heyday. First team All-American at UCF. Also a first round draft pick, I believe, by the Yankees. Back when UCF was tearing it up. They mentioned that, you know, JU has been on quite the roll at the plate. Winners, or I should say, scoring at least five run plus runs in nine of the last 10 games. The only game they didn't do that again in was against the UCF Knights who shut them out. Right. So that UCF Knights team you Still see doing it? some big stuff over there. Just broke into the top 25, I saw as well. They're, I mean, they've had a heck of a start to their season, and they are, uh, they're winning some big games. It's always cool to see a lot of these Florida teams face each other throughout the season. A right. lot of midweek games. Of course, Florida State will play the Gators. They're our rival one Tuesday or so every, every th three times a year. And yeah, JU as well, playing three times a year. Florida State will see a Stetson team that's competing with JU in the A-Sun. Bethune-Cookman. You know, there's really, there, you, you can't sleep on any of these teams. Well, you know, they'll, Florida State will see UCF. They'll have a three-game set against Miami. It's just, there's no there's no off weeks when it comes to Florida competition. Well, this JU team's had some success against the Seminoles the last several years. Here goes Williams stealing from first, and this pitch, this throw is well off the mark, and that'll go into center field, but Williams will stay put at second. So another stolen base for FSU running, base running. Yeah, I think Logan Jones, after three pickoff attempts, knew exactly why Jordan Williams was there to pinch run. And for you Williams, see the, you see the jump right here. He gets a good lead, just <laughs> Gets his momentum you know and takes thinking. off, man. He, he he had a great jump right there. What you got to do? You, you got one out. You got to get to second base. There he goes again. He's taking off for third with a head of steam, and he's in there. Talking about a jump from first. How about that jump from second? Not even close. Yeah, if you, from behind if, the plate. If you watch Jordan Williams get that walking lead, what he'll do, man, is he starts about a step or two behind second base, and he will just walk towards the pitcher. And he's gaining ground when he does that. And the pitcher just thinks he's just stepping towards him. But no, he's a gaining ground towards third and just works that momentum right into another stolen base. Yeah, Connor Spellman did not have a chance of getting Williams, who's taken over for Delisi behind the plate tonight after Delisi was subbed in last inning on the base path. So Williams collects his seventh and eighth stolen base on the season, reaffirming the lead in the FSU clubhouse in stolen bases. That was a great job by the catcher there to block that ball up. You, you, you saw Cal Fisher swing at the, the slider tonight has not been very, very good. He's been he just hadn't been seeing that down on the way slider. So they tried again right there. And that was a great pitch or a great block by the catcher to keep that in front of him. Yeah, Spellman, save a run. Spellman knowing right now cannot afford to let a pass ball go by, especially with the speed of Williams at third. It'd be yeah. very difficult to get him if he <laughs> heads for home. You got to get, you see the infield in for, for JU. They do not want this run to come in. Only one out. 
Fisher gets a piece of this, more than a piece. This is belted off the top of the fence. Williams will come on home, and Fisher, Mr. Cal Fisher with an RBI double, makes it a two-run game once again for the Seminoles, now 4-2. So this young shortstop making the most of his opportunities in these last several games. Spectacular piece of hitting right there. Two strike hitting, man. They do it again. They try to come in with that, that, that slider, but this one just gets too much of the plate, and Cal Fisher gets a good piece of that and drives it. I mean, it shows you how strong he really is. That ball not even hit perfectly, and that ball carried so far. Big, strong freshman. Yeah, he went fishing for that pitch, and boy, did he get a big, <laughs> big bite on that one. <laughs> I like his, his his little move over there. Everybody's got their own special move at second base. And uh, fish is swimming over there. Fish is swimming, man. <laughs> Here's Diamez Ross. Fisher back in at second base as Jones went back to second, trying to pick him off. Yeah, Diamez Ross with three flyouts tonight. Hadn't been able to get on top of the ball. This guy can really hit when he wants to, man, or when he's, when, he's, when he's really feeling it. But you see him lately, he just seems to be a little bit out on his front leg, and that's causing his bat to dip. Just with the head's moving, bat's dipping, and you're going to lose a lot of power that way. You're going to end up popping balls up and hitting soft ground balls to, towards uh, the right side of the field. Pitch outside, 2-1. and one. Well, we talked about the proverbial catcher battle right now between Jackson and Weston Holbrook. You know, there's kind of a center fielder battle right now between Ross there and, is, Max there is. and Max Williams right now. Yeah, both, both both of them have been equally, you know, good defensively. They've, they've both been spark plugs offensively, um, you know, in that top of that lineup. It's just been, it's, I'm sure it's been a breath of fresh air for the Seminole coaching staff to have a problem like that. So, a very good problem to have when you're you're able to sub guys off the bench and they're able to give you the same quality uh, start or same quality on defense, same quality on offense, base running. I mean, it's it's all there, which is tremendous. And you continue to win at the same time. You know, right. their, their production right. is not. If you have a mistake one or two, it's not being detrimental to the end result at the same time. Right. Two-two pitch from Jones. Ross chops this one over to the right side. Nato over to Delgado. Gets the second out. Fisher advances to third. So Florida State again with another opportunity. Staying here in this seventh inning. And the top dog, Cam Smith, returns yeah. to the plate. Well, you get, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, that's, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to call it a quality at bat by Diamas Ross, but it does get a job done. Does get a job done. Gets the guy over to second, uh, to third base. And now you gotta, now you gotta run 90 feet away. And one mistake by the pitcher, the catcher, you get another run. And that's that's exactly what Florida State needs to do here is try to, you know, expand on that lead. Jones a little off speed to start things off with Cam Smith. Yeah, Cam Smith's not the guy you want to give a whole lot of fastballs to if you can help it. Curveball gets away. One and one. One for three is Smith tonight. Does have a run batted in. And he scored a run. This one in close to the hands. And Jones a little erratic. Yeah, that ball up and in to Cam Smith, which honestly, if you're a right-handed pitcher, man, it's almost what you have to do. If you if you can get that velocity up, you got to get that ball inside on the hands of Cam Smith. That's probably the only place he's really just, vulnerable. Just and and I wouldn't again. even call it that. And if he could pull his hands in and get the barrel to it, now it's going to go a long ways. But his approach has been so good this year to hit it up the middle and the other way. So if you can get in on the hands of Cam Smith, then you're really doing something. And well protected, I must say, as well. Oh, yeah. Knowing he's you know, pretty Got a pretty close stance toward that plate. He definitely wants to get all of the ball and luckily avoids contact with the ball and he will trot over to first for another walk for Florida State. That puts runners on the corners and James Tibbs, who had the biggest spark of the night, Absolutely. a two-run home run opposite field, is back with well, another opportunity. I'll tell you what, you give James Tibbs an opportunity with he gave James Tibbs an opportunity with runners on base, and, and he almost he took 
really helped him develop his tools in the field of really right. tracking down and running down balls into the outfield. So there's nothing that James Tibbs does not work on. Well, last year he had to be a real team player and play a little bit of first base, some outfield. But, man, you saw the play he made over there and right already the today with the sliding catch running in. That's that's That shows you just where, how far he's come defensively. Right now it's all about offensively at the plate and getting some more runs across for his teammates. Takes this right. first pitch low out of the zone, 1-0. You got him lefty right there with pitching to James Tibbs. I wouldn't be surprised to see Cam Smith take second base on this one of these next two pitches. He'll stay put, and Tibbs takes a strike. Spellman behind the plate, once again taking over for Nick DeLisi. Already been tested by Williams, and yeah. Williams got the better of him with two still on bases and eventually scored here in this inning. Another pitch taken by Tibbs, two and one. Yeah, the off-speed pitch there by Carver down in the zone. It's a good pitch. Trying to get Tibbs to chase, but, man, Tibbs is just not a guy that chases balls out of the zone very often. So you got to come to him. That's what, that's what makes him so good and so special. You see it right there. That's a great pitch right there. Good pitch to hit, 2-1, and, and Tibbs shaking his head. He's disappointed he didn't take a hack at that one, I'm was, sure. Wasn't the pitch I think he was seeking, so he got tied up a little bit. Yep. 2-2. Two, two. Tibbs gets a hold of this, drives this one far off the top of the fence. Fisher scores. Tibbs heading for second and is safe, just misses the tag. Florida State ends up with runners in scoring position as Cam Smith ends up at third, but what a rip from Tibbs. That ball right there might have been hit too hard. Unbelievable. That ball at the, the right fielder looked up like it was going to be a home run. Tibbs turning on this pitch with two strikes. Carver just leaves it up in the zone. Tibbs hustles for a double, just making it, but with a phenomenal slide around the tag. <laughs> the friendly confines of Dick Houser Stadium kind of going against Florida State in some aspects and denied Florida State a couple of home runs. Oh, yeah. Nonetheless, though, this does get a run across the plate. Fisher scoring makes it 5-2 to two Seminoles. Another RBI for James Tibbs and another extra base hit for James Tibbs. Makes him 3 for 4 tonight. <laughs> the last two games, he's 7 for his last 8. Yep, with how many homers? Oh, and Jaime Ferrer gets beamed, and that will load the bases. So Tibbs just <laughs> continues to just belt the ball and Unfortunately for Jaime Ferrer, he continues to get hit by the ball. That's his eighth hit by pitch this season, which leads FSU hitters. However, does expand his on base streak in another game. <laughs> that, that was one thing he needed. That it does. And Max Williams will, will give Jaime Ferrer a break. <laughs> Maybe head behind the scenes and get some ice. Absolutely. So that'll be the end of Jaime Ferrer's night, but as you mentioned, extends the on-base streak to 33 games. Yeah, the guys, the guys in the middle of this lineup from Florida State. Rich, listen to these on-base percentages before the game starts. 500, 488, 430, 414, 463. That's pretty insane if you think about it. You got guys that are just always on base. Makes it so tough on another team, you know, other teams. Like now, now you got the bases loaded and you got Jack Carver. That gets in the pitcher's head a little bit. I mean, of the guys who have started at least 25 games for Florida State, the lowest on base percentage is Lodis at 481, and he hasn't exactly started the last couple games. Right. Everybody, everybody else is at least above 500. Right. It's It's just insane. And Tibbs topping that out, entering tonight at 820, as you mentioned, which is nuts. Right. Dinges. Another foul. Dinges just misses that one. He's fouled two straight back, and that off-speed pitch might have been a hair out in front of it, but, man, this guy really swings a hot bat. Bases loaded, two outs. Momentum's on Florida State's side right now. Carver, the senior, trying to get out of this inning and gets Dinges to swing and get a piece of that, so the at-bat will continue. Yeah, when you're a free swinger like Dinges, like you, you get two strikes on you, you got to protect the zone, and that ball way out of the zone, but I'll tell you what, does a good job of spoiling it and getting, getting another opportunity to see another pitch. 
He's calling upon one of his more experienced relievers to get the job done. And for Tinchus, an unfortunate circumstance there. Another pitch high and in. Yeah. But bang, the ball banged on metal yeah. and not flesh. So you see the Jay, you guys still laughing, one man. He's like, well, we got away with one right there. But Dinges with another foul ball. We've kind of seen it all tonight. We've seen hit by pitches. We've seen pass balls, hands in, Homers, beams, doubles. Everything tonight. All beautiful things you see in baseball. Dinges swings and misses. So Carver cars up Dinges and gets out of what would have been an explosion of an inning for Florida State. It's about an inning. Averages an inning per outing. Curious to see if he can go two innings to close this one out for the Seminoles. Very dependable arm, and he faces the top of the order. And Will Gale lets him see a first pitch strike. And again, mentioned how great Florida State relief pitching has been, and Joe Charles in particular has been a big catalyst to that ever since that Clemson series. Absolutely. He's just been lights out, and he is a uh... – He's been a you know a, a, a surely a ray of sunshine for for, for Link Jared after after the woes of last season. You know watching watching how much maturity these guys you know have out of the pen and seeing what he's getting out of the starting pitching staff. It's it's just been outstanding. So you know tip of cap to what they've been able to accomplish this far in the season. Pitch high and in three and one to Gale. Charles, the fifth pitcher for FSU tonight. You see Gale 0 for 2. First right-hander. And the first right-hander, like you mentioned, started with Brady Lauk, who put together a commendable three and two-thirds innings. And Gale will head to first after the five-pitch walk. And that right there, that's exactly what... We've seen that a couple times now from from Florida State, from JU. That, that leadoff walk, you don't, you, you can't come out and do that. That's that's uh, you know, that's one of those cardinal sins of a, as far as a, a a relief pitcher goes. You do not come out and walk the first batter. You definitely don't walk on the leadoff in inning. Gale in particular, he has two walks tonight. And he possesses a lot of speed. The fourth time tonight, leadoff batter has gotten a free pass to first base. That's exactly who Chris Hayes would want on the base pass right now. The guy who's leading his team in steals, in fact, is third among A Sun players right now. Entered tonight with 11. They've only been thrown out once this season. Joe Charles struggling to find the command that we're so used to seeing from him. Again, quickly behind 3 0. And should mention defensive changes for Florida State. Jackson West is out there now behind the plate. All right, we talk about we talked about that a little earlier. How interchangeable uh, McGuire, Holbrook, and, and Jackson West have been so far this year. Both of them really able to swing the bat, but defensively, um, really, really, I think you know Jackson West has had a stellar start. And also out in left field, Max Williams has taken over for Jaime Ferrer. There's the strike zone. He's facing Chandler Howard, who's pinch hitting. Yeah, if I'm a catcher going to talk to my pitcher, I'm saying, man, strike and a ground ball. Throw a strike, get a ground ball. Swing and a miss by Chandler Howard. Just like that, more favorable count, now full. Charles is 3-2. Swing and lined by Howard. That'll fall for a base hit. Williams will throw it back in. Runners will only advance one base. As Gale heads to second, but nice piece of hitting. Only the second base hit for JU tonight. Right. We, I think we talked about that before the game. Lost to uh, the shuffle is the fact man. that, you know, JU has had some opportunities, but a lot of them have been due to walks or right. pass balls advancing on right. runs and hit by pitches. Yeah, you're in the, you're in the eighth inning and you just get your second hit. And for a team that averages nine plus a game, uh, you know, I, I got to tell you, man, that, that they, they're struggling to hit this Florida State pitching staff. You know, it's, it's never easy when you face a new guy every time you come out, but uh, two hits through eight innings, not, not necessarily a recipe for success. 
Well, this is perhaps the best thing that J.U. could ask for in terms of who's at the plate now, and Justin Nato. Right, coming into today. At you see Coming Carson. Today at 409. See Carson Dorsey getting warm for Florida State. Another lefty. You got to keep in mind, you know, Florida State, a lot of teams around the country getting two days off. Right. The last several days was Easter weekend, so a lot of teams selecting not to play Sunday. Of course, Monday usually a typical off day as well. Right. Rarely see a game in college baseball be played on Monday night. So bullpens, relievers, and pitching staffs in general are all pretty fresh. As Link Jarrett kind of just wanted to buy some more time here. Probably get Dorsey warmed up, and here comes Link Jarrett now. And one of the best hitters in all of the A Sun. In fact, if you just limited it to players with at least 90 at bats, he is tops in that conference. And you see why. Great piece of hitting. Shot through the infield for a base hit. But no runners will come across. So Gale will stay at third, will go to third and stay there. So Nado climbs aboard for the first time tonight. First hit. And J.U. had a real big threat now with the bases loaded and nobody out. Yeah, Carson Dorsey, no stranger to pitching with the bases loaded so far this season. But I tell you what, man, it's a great piece of hitting by Nadeau. You, you, you get a guy who comes in and, and, you know, new pitcher, I promise you the coach is telling him, hey, I just need you to throw strikes. We just gave up a walk and a hit. I need you to throw strikes. Nadeau knew what was coming, jumped all over it for a base hit. You see that 94-mile-an-hour heater by Dorsey, though. Unhittable right there to Hodges. Hodges fouls it back 0 and 2. Yeah, just to finish up on Nado. Yeah, best batting average entered tonight. 409 if you consider it at least 90 at bats in the A Sun. Third overall, but with at least 90 at bats. He already had more extra base hits and stolen bases than he had all of last year. Absolutely, which is saying a lot. I mean, he he, he started all 49 games for the JU last year as a freshman. And and had a had a heck of a season. For a great freshman campaign where he hit 294. Uh, but like you said, man, his extra base hits really got up. That tells you his off-season off workout plan's been really paying off, and the stolen bases, that, that jumps off the page at you as well. Now can Clay Hodges jump a pitch here, grounds it over to short. Over to, over to second for one, and gets the double play for two. Six, four, three. One run does score. Gale comes across for J.U., so... Makes it a 5-3 ball game, but a much-needed double play for Florida State. Yeah, great job by Cal Fisher to charge this ball, get the play at second. You see Drew Ferrell making a quick turn, and Florida State giving up a run for two outs. And that's just that's just good baseball right there. And in fact, that's a play in the last couple games against Louisville, Brandon, that Florida State had a couple of issues with. Yep. A couple of charging or at least pitch, you know, plays at the shortstop or the second baseman and throw over to second where the guy covering is either out of step or the throw goes errant past them. Right. That was very clean by Cal Fisher and company there. Very clean. And, and you can get a little cavalier sometimes on charging those balls. You, you know, that play right there, that's, that's, that might be a little slower than he thought, but you got to come get that ball and, and get the ball into the second baseman's hands as quickly as possible. Bare minimum, if you get out at second, you still got to force out for the next play at second, which is... You know, it's quality baseball, but you'll, you'll always, in that scenario where you're up by three runs, you'll always trade one run for two outs. That's a that's a good pitch by Dorsey and a great play by the Seminole defense. Blake Edmonds swinging and missing for the second straight time, now behind one and two. And everybody gets something out of it. But if you're J.U., it's the wall. You're back up against the wall now trying to keep this inning alive. Absolutely. Edmonds with a walk and a hit by pitch his last two at bats. He's not used to seeing the 94 heater. Well, he's doing damage in the other direction. He does not. Carson Dorsey comes in. Folks, we got a good one. 5-3, Florida State out in front of Jacksonville University. As Daniel Cantu sees the first pitch here from Carver. He got six, seven, eight, nine in the lineup for the Seminoles. And Cantu. Again, who's been very good as of late. 0 for 3 tonight. Takes a big cut of the slow sweeping curveball. He's done a little Jack bit of every, done a little bit of everything getting out tonight. Ground out, fly out, strike out. Yep. So he's put the ball in play. 
0-2. Oh, Fouls it off himself. Yeah, Cantu is one of those true blue pole hitters, man. You see the, the you almost always see the defense um, playing him to pole. Third baseman way over, shortstop playing a little bit towards second base. That's a true pole hitter. Stays alive, 0-2. That was a much better swing. Seemed to have that pitch a little more timed up. Cantu originally from Jacksonville, Florida. Facing his hometown team tonight. Takes this pitch one and two. Gets this one up the middle, but it's over at short. Fired over by Hentz to record the first out here in the bottom of the eighth. You got Daniel Cantu who just does a great job. Two strikes, shoots that ball up the middle. That's a hit any for any other player but Daniel Cantu because the uh, the shortstop had him played perfectly. Yeah, Kate Hentz playing a little bit over that bag at second base. All right. And you got Drew Ferro batting from the right hand side. Florida State's only switch hitter. Drew 0 for 2 tonight with a walk, a ground out, and a fly out. Fouls this one off, 1 and 1. Crowd getting active, still trying to will the Seminoles on. Up by 2. Five runs, six hits, and one error by Florida State. Jacksonville with three runs and three hits. Here's Jack Carver's 1-1. One, one. Off speed, breaking pitch. Outside and low, 2-1. and one. Yeah, this is one of those things. Drew, Drew Ferro has been a, you know, he's an exceptional young man, an exceptional hitter. Uh, he's definitely got a lot more at bats under his belt from the left side. And he's got a lot of power from that left side. There's a strike by Carver, 2-2. Two and two. But it's so tough on switch hitters to bounce back and forth and try to see the ball from both sides of the plate. But Drew Ferreau has been pretty exceptional so far this year at it. Enter today, 318 hitting, but has not found the outfield or getting on base tonight. Swing and a miss, strikeout. Two down. Just a good pitch by Carver on the outside part. A great job right there pitching on the outside corner to Drew Ferro and, and he knew it before it even got to the to yeah. the mitt. <laughs> like he, such timing just looking away. It's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> he's, doing a, he's doing a really good job of mixing speeds, and that's that's what uh that's what makes him pretty special. Jackson like, West with his first plate appearance tonight drops down the butt and will split down the first baseline with an infield hit. It's a little small ball by the Seminoles with two outs. That's pretty exceptional. Old Jackson West, he, he has a, uh, you see the third, he saw, he must have read the third baseman playing a little far back, puts a perfect bunt down. But uh, a little miscommunication between the lefty and, or the left handed pitcher and, and the third baseman right there. Third baseman makes a great play coming in. Might have had a shot, but the pitcher kind of ran in his way and made it hard for him to make a throw. But Jackson West, way to, you know, read it and get on base. Get to the next batter. Tallahassee's own. Yeah, Drew Ferro and, and Jackson West, Tallahassee natives, happy to be playing in their their home their hometown, Garnet and Gold. West didn't start his career here as a Seminole. Went to Alabama in his freshman year. Made the SEC first year academic honor roll. A very intelligent player, which is really saying something because his dad is not a smart man. <laughs> Good buddy of mine, Kip West. Shout out to Mr. West. I'm sure Jackson gets his smarts from his mom. <laughs> well, they, they've done a nice job raising him up, I'd say no, that. Great young man, that's for sure. <laughs> great young man. Great baseball player as well. Cal Fisher back at the plate. He's had a nice night. Yep. Trying to keep this inning going for Florida State. Big two strike double off the fence his last at bat showing us showing his pop
Cal Fisher only starting his second game comes into the day came into the day with 15 at bats and seven hits two homers. Here goes West swinging a miss though by Fisher and that will retire the Knowles in the eighth. Doing. Carson Dorsey's a high strikeout guy so you may see a couple this inning if he if he stays on stays with his command as he did last inning. Tanner Zellum gets his first plate appearance tonight subbed in earlier in the game as a pinch runner. This one just missing the mark 2 and 0. Dorsey with that live arm. A lot of velocity on that fastball. That was fine in the zone. 93 inside corner to Zellum. Tell you what, when you get your first at bat of the night, it's never fun seeing 94. No, never. Usually by the end of the night on a on a when the whole staff is pitching. That's like your coffee, but it's not a pleasant experience as this one's fouled into near the bleacher area and it's just inside the railing. So no Seminoles were able to track it down and get there in time. Cantu and Tibbs the third, the closest. Two and two though. Good hustle by Cantu. Balls, balls really kind of in no man's land again with the righty up. You guys are playing way off the line. Freshman, freshman Zellin waiting for the 2 2 and takes it with a fastball high out of the zone, 3 and 2. And what's been very impressive, you know, we've showed the stats, strikeouts per innings, right. how good the relievers have been in terms of the earned runs given up here over the last several games. It's really just all come together of what Link Jarrett was hoping would be the reality after last season, knowing he was trying to construct something of the pieces that he had and trying to mold it together. It needed to be an offseason, and he finally thought he found it in the preseason after a few heart-to-hearts with the starters, and then that just bleeds over or just carries over. Right. And Zellin forces a walk into the relievers because if you can extend the outings of your starters, it will put that much less pressure on your relievers needing to come in every other game. Well, it also builds confidence in your starters. It lets them know that you, you as a coach, trust them to go that extra inning, to go those extra 10 pitches, to go that extra batter. You know, there's 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 a lot to that. And like you said, I mean, all the pieces uh, that, that go to this game, you know, Coach Jarrett's done a great job of building that within this team. And it all starts with the, you know, in my opinion, like the team chemistry. He's, he's done a great job of building a uh, – a, a team from the inside out. Abdriel Delgado now at the plate, one and one after that pitch in the dirt. And really just wanted to get his starters more ramped up, like with Cam Leiter, Jamie Arnold, and Connor Whitaker in particular. He was those are the three guys he really wanted to step right. up and be consistent everyday starters or weekend starters, and they've done that. Right. Another ball in the dirt, two and one, and Really, when he got them to go out there and watching them from afar, just they're like 15, 30 minute spurts, maybe even hour or so plus, where he said it was as good as I've ever seen the college game being played. Right. Not just pitching wise, but also defensively. And that's what that's what really struck him from for what he thought could really be special. And then there were other times where he thought it was really frustrating at the same time, too, where it's like, sure. why is this happening? It's just the hardest part for him was really just trying to keep the mindset fresh when things go wrong. Can we get right back to it? Right, and that's that's the key. You got it. You got to just. You have to have a short memory. You tell, you know, I coach my son's team. He's 11 years old, and we tell those kids, those kids, you, you, you got to be a goldfish, right? You got to have a short memory. You can't dwell on the past, and and you're gonna have days where, where it's just not there. You you know, and, and these kids, they're kids, man. Like a lot of times, you forget that they're. It's a great pitch by Connor Dorsey right there. Another strikeout. That's the 11th yeah. strikeout. <laughs> but you. You see Connor Dorsey with a hard on the outside corner, just unhittable for Delgado. Lefty, lefty, great pitch by by Dorsey. But again, you know he, he's just done a great job of building uh, a, a really good team here, and, and you like to see that from you, you like to see what he's been able to do in building a 
building something in, in just a short amount of time too. That's, yeah. It's been very impressive and, and, and special to watch. And I think he, you know, he really gives a lot of credit to his pitching coach, Micah Posey, no question about it, that he's really worked hard with the pitching staff, yep. with all the pitchers. And then I think you really got to give a lot of credit to Ty McGee, uh, McGee who's not just been their great assistant coach for them, but their recruiting coordinator, really working that transfer portal to get guys in here who can contend and who can compete, really get the best out of not just the guys around them, but quality guys who can be dependable. Yeah, Ty, Ty was a, a teammate of mine at Mercer. He was our, our shortstop, and I'm going to tell you what, he was a smart guy. And, and you, you, like you said, you, you have the game has changed a little bit. You, you really got to you got to you got to work that that transfer portal these days. And it's so tough to do, you know, but um, Ty, <laughs> smart as he is, man, I'll tell you what, we, we had a we had a pretty good uh, team GPA at Mercer and, and I'm pretty sure Ty even me out. He's the one. That, <laughs> You know what I mean? We if we had a 3.0, if we had a 3.0, he had to pull a 4.0 for me. There you go. But uh, bringing everybody up, man. He, he's just he, they, he, like you said, he's been exceptional and, and and just going out and getting really good guys off the road. Another one two as Kate Hens continues to fight off Dorsey. And top of the ninth here, Florida State, number 14th ranked team in the country, out to a 5-3 lead. Knowles took the first matchup between these two teams in late February, 7-4, and it's another tight one here. Came down to the ninth in that first game. Pitch in the dirt, 2-2. Florida State needed three runs in the top of the ninth to come away with the victory. It was tied 4-4, and Jacksonville needs three runs just yeah. to get the lead. That's right. And uh, These two to tie it and keep this game going. Absolutely. And Dorsey was steady. Dose of fastballs comes with a good curveball down in the dirt, but just can't get the batter to chase. This one dug out of the ground by Hence, and that will hit the netting right on the railing. Can't give him a chase right there. I thought he had a shot at it, but from our angle, it's hard to see. But he, uh, I guess, that caught the net just in time. Two. This one gets past West, and it's a free base for Jacksonville. Yeah, good take right there by Kate Hans. I'm not sure if that was a cross up or not. You know, Jackson West has been nothing but solid defensively so far, but that ball gets just under his glove. Tanner Zellum will head on over to second base. So now in scoring position, of course, the tying run is at the plate. That's the important one. Three, two. Grounder over to short. Fisher charging, gets the throw and the out at first base for the second out of the game. And boy, Fisher has been busy over there, Brandon, tonight. A lot of charges from that shortstop position, and he's yeah, been really rock solid. I don't know if he's had a routine play today. He's had several plays. He's had a backhand in the hole. He's had three or four balls where he's had to charge and make that throw on the run. Turned a double play last inning. Yeah, on a, on a, on a ball he had to charge on. Just, I mean, just exceptional work from the freshman, Cal Fisher. He's been Taking over a little bit for Alex Lodis. Pitch just out of the zone. It's Connor Spellman who's in. Backup catcher. Yeah, Spellman probably not expecting a curveball first pitch from Dorsey. On your pinch hit at bat. Now there's a fastball charging it at 93, but a little low. Not in the eyes of the crowd, but yeah. just missed below the knees, two and up. Tell you what, uh, our home plate umpire Ryan Clark squeezing Dorsey just a little bit. That, those, those look like pretty good pitches that he's called throughout the game. But now quickly 2-0 to Spellman. Infield back, outfield back for the Knowles. Pitch inside, 3-0. So Dorsey trying to find the sweet spot right now. He's got two outs. Just needs one more, right. but another base runner, and you have the winning run, or the go-ahead run, I should say, at the plate. 
Yeah, this is one. This is one of those things that, that that Connor Dorsey's had those issues with. You know, he's in this big save opportunity. He came in last inning and, and got the got the outs needed to get Florida State back in the dugout. But um, you know, leadoff walk this inning. He still got a strikeout, induced a ground out, but falling behind this the the pinch hitter Spellman in this situation. You know, maybe maybe the, maybe the nerves, maybe the adrenaline's got him, but. Chance at redemption, fouled away, however. But it does go full, three and two with two outs, which will bring the crowd to their feet. And this is where you want to see Connor Dorsey excel, man. Get the, come in with that fastball, drive it past this base, or this hitter, and uh, get your team into tomorrow. Zellin at second base, three, two, two outs to Spellman. And low in the dirt. And Spellman will head to first base. And that will get Will Gale to the plate, top of the order for the Dolphins. And here's Tuesday night, first game in the month of April for both of these teams. First pitch, fastball, strike right over the middle, 0 and 1. Careful with that ball getting away. <laughs> that ball's live. So I think, I think Connor well, Dorsey. has got some speed over there. So Connor Dorsey just looked away a hair too early before the ball was in his club. But don't put these guys on second and third. That's 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 a no-no. Off-speed breaking pitch. Wants well, scale to move up out of the batter's box. One and one. You see the spin rate on Dorsey's fastball and his curveball right there. That curveball kept spinning and just spun right out of the sun. Looked like a strike the entire way. Good take by Gale. Swing and a miss, climbs the ladder. One and two. That's going to bring the Seminole faithful to their feet once again. Dorsey versus Gale once again. One, two, two outs, two runners on. Lines, deep right field, but cut by James Tibbs the third, and that will secure the victory for Florida State. And what was a tight back and forth game all night long, Florida State, however, never lost the lead, and with this victory, reached 20.